spotlight goes on the two, and the people around them turn and clap. Some give Jack a pat on the back. And who is the girl, you may ask? Why, his future wife. The bravest girl I've ever known. Mrs. Ann Darrow! Once again, there are claps, and Kong sees Ann, and love shines in his eyes. He hunches his body outwards in a desperate attempt to get her, but he can't. Denim continues. Before we continue with our show, I'd like to take a moment to let the paparazzi take the first ever pictures of the beast. He lies. A group of photographers come out, and before they aim their cameras at Kong, Denim orders them over to Ann and Jack, and they move over there and begin to take many snapshots as the couple tries to pose. Jack kind of gets into it and gives a nice heroic toothy smile, but Anne is feeling a little uncomfortable. Maybe she wasn't cut out for the fame she was seeking. Come on fellas, get a good shot. They're getting married tomorrow. Kong starts growling and tugging more. Be careful boys, he thinks you're attacking the girl. Denim warns, half seriously, half mockingly. After a few more shots, the paparazzi stops and Anne rubs the spots out of her eyes. One of the photographers speaks up and says, All right, all right, let's see the ape please. Okay, Denim gets in. Come on up. He looks behind the curtain. Anyone else scheduled for photos? Get on out here. A whole lot more photographers enter from stage left, and when they're given the cue, they begin snapping pictures, and the flash startles Kong as he begins to thrash even harder than before. Anne starts thinking more and more about that day on the island. Plus, she feels bad for the giant gorilla. She tugs at Jack's coat and asks if they could leave, and Jack gives in after a small back and forth of whispers. Kong roars loud as the audience is taken aback and begins clapping, but Denim sees the danger in the situation. Eh, maybe take it easy on the flash photography, boys, he warns nicely. To which one of the photographers snarkily answers, Ah, let him roar, it'll make a swell picture. As they keep going, Kong becomes increasingly more furious. His vision is mostly centered on Anne. In slow motion, Kong watches as she walks away, and before she exits the crowd, she turns around and looks at Kong one last time her beautiful blue connecting with his grizzled brown. That's the final straw. Kong lets out a thunderous roar and pulls with all his might, and the chrome steel chains snap, leaving the shackles looking like mere armbands. The audience gasp and scream as Kong jumps down from his metal prison. Denim turns around and his eyes go wide when he realizes what's happening. Kong jumps down into the audience and begins stomping people. Not because he wants to kill, but because he's confused. He searches for Anne in the sea of people who might as well be ants to him. Any lady with blonde hair is a target. He picks up many blondes, and when he realizes that it's not Anne, he tosses them to the side. Denim is left standing in the wreckage of his own presentation. Kong goes downtown into apartment districts, and passes by an L track and begins destroying it as the L train comes by. The operator of the train sees this giant head in front of him with wild, wide, primal eyes, and pulls on the brakes as hard as he can. The sudden stop makes many passengers fly forward, which injures many of them as they're all piled into each other and crushed into the corner as we see a close-up of a girl screaming into the camera, hands on the side of her head. There are many broken and or dislocated bones. Kong grabs the L train and pulls it down and begins bashing it. Some people escape out the back. A man climbs down, then his wife or girlfriend puts her hand out and he takes it and helps her down before they begin running. Another woman's legs pop out of the bottom and kick frantically, shoes falling off before she lands and runs. The rest of the passengers inside scream before they're smashed into silence. He then climbs one of the apartment buildings. Inside one of the apartments is a woman packing her bags quickly, obviously planning to flee the city. In the background, Kong peeks in and smashes her window. She obviously screams her head off. Kong holds her upside down as blood-curdling screams come from her, and Kong drops her many feet to her death as sirens blare in the background. The silence and her scream almost sink up. Cars are driving so fast they crash. The military is called in as they begin firing at Kong. Back with Anne and Jack, they're listening to the radio and keeping up on the action. Anne comes to the obvious conclusion that it's her he wants, and in hopes to lessen the destruction, she suggests that she just give herself to him, but Jack cares for her and doesn't want to lose her. They get in an argument before Anne stomps out of their room and heads for the rooftop. She locks the door behind her because she knows Jack is right behind her. Kong jumps from building to building before hearing Anne's voice. Kong follows the call before landing on the roof. They stare at each other before Kong slowly and gently puts Anne in his hand, lifting her up to his eyes as if to be sure that this time it's her. But there's also a look in his eyes that asks, Why? He's disappointed that she left him, but also glad to have her back. Jack kicks in the door just in time to see Anne get whisked away. Before Kong jumps, they all just stare at each other. 
Anne flipping around, staring worriedly at Jack, almost as if she was caught cheating or something. Kong just jumps off with blasts from the military trailing behind him, missing and damaging the windows of buildings. Jack doesn't know what to do. There's only one thing that pops in his mind, and it occurs to him that there's only one person he could go to. He runs down the stairs and takes to the streets. Meanwhile, Kong is avoiding military fire left and right until he loses them and ends up in Central Park. They walk through the zoo, and Kong is saddened seeing all the apes in cages. All the apes marvel at him. Most are restless and shaking the bars. Kong looks down at Anne with a tear coming down his left eye. Anne reaches up and pets under the giant's eye, attempting to wipe the tear away with questionable success. They stare at each other some more until Anne whispers, Kong, you have to stop. He hears sirens, tank treads, and gunfire in the distance, but doesn't know exactly where they're coming from as he spins around in a paranoid defense mode, letting out angered breaths and grunts, and Anne raises her hand and begins to stroke the fur on his arm, trying to calm him down. They won't hurt you, she shouts, but not meanly, more like a mother trying to comfort a child at the doctor's office or something. Kong looks down at her, confused and still agitated. Even he knows what she's saying is ridiculous, but he must hear the rest. I'll protect you! I could talk to them! She offers, not quite sure if the plan will work, but this must come to an end. 